Benny and Iggy Pop and David Bowie. You must be exhausted. I'm a little bit uh, keyed up now. I know. That's kind of hard to come down from. It's difficult to, to break back out of. Of course. I'm going to call you Jimmy, if sure. I may. Sure, I appreciate it. Yeah. Jimmy, when you do two and three shows a night, mm -hmm. uh, 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 how, do you, how do you come out? Usually, when we work, I do that mm -hmm. for about an hour and a half. <laughs> Good heavens. You've known each other for years, haven't you? Yeah, for yeah. six years. Where yeah. did you meet? What inspired this? <laughs> <laughs> Where did you meet? In a bar. In a bar. New York. New York. <laughs> yeah. You but, sure? Yeah. <laughs> we were both unrecognized at the time, so we had a lot to, you know, in common. But you, All right. but you knew that you, but you were both interested in music. Yeah. No, not music. I mean, well, whatever you uh, call it, you call it music. Yeah. Okay. What do you call this? Well, punk. Rock. What is punk? Rock? This isn't music. This is nothing to do with punk rock. rock. <laughs> what is it? Explain to me what it is. David. <laughs> David. Well, it's not, uh, my understanding of punk rock is uh, something that's happened in England, I think, uh -huh. really, over the last couple of years, but uh, what Jimmy was doing, uh, I'd never seen Jimmy, really, uh -huh. but I'd heard some of his albums, and uh, it sounded like, uh, uh, I don't know, nihilistic rock. Uh -huh. It was nihilism. But well, that's Which true. fascinates me. Well, yeah. I love nihilism. <laughs> <laughs> well, well... <laughs> I just we, love philosopher talk. <laughs> no, but that, that, that's interesting. Be, uh, it's a, a little remote from reality at times. No, it, it doesn't. doesn't. Oh, come Not on. at all. No. 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 But now, in your collaboration, what do you consider... Your, uh, what type of music do you do then, David? M myself? Mm -hmm. Um, well, oh, I don't ask Jimmy. <laughs> and what kind of, you had heard. And I'll tell you what his he does. Is, his is a bit up there. What I do. Yes, it's it is. A bit is. more airy. Yeah. My, my, my music is just basically, I look for things to tear apart, you know. And, mm -hmm. Oh, that's good to whip, you know, that's very you easy. You don't even think about it uh, before you do it. It just happens, doesn't it, when you Well, not what a Jimmy did when we were in a, do you mind me talking? No, no. I, mm -hmm. Um, you sure? Yeah. Okay. Uh, in the studio, Jimmy would um, make up the lyrics on the spot, and we would keep everything that he did, mm -hmm. and uh, occasionally change a line after we recorded. But J Jimmy, I'd, I've never seen anybody be able to make up lyrics so fast, just out of his I head of to seat. a track. And That's it's fine. more like, a, uh, I guess uh, he'll hate me, but it's it's more like a. The, the beatnik era mm -hmm. thing with you see no, it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's a retreat i mean it's it's it's, it's a very spontaneous a kind of lyric it's, it's not like a written thing at all with jimmy uh, but whereas no. mine is i spend months writing one word yeah. that, then i have to look it up and see how to spell it <laughs> <laughs> which is what most of us have to do no but david what i mean is when you you recorded Iggy first or jimmy first no 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 iggy already had two albums out on his own that he'd done himself I um, see. And, uh, and then the, the um, general favor went, went, went against Jim because of what he was doing at the time, it seemed. Uh, but Would you, you describe some about. of the things you were doing at the time, which were the things that I had heard about? And well, I was doing, what I was really, I was doing songs like I Want to Be Your Dog and mm -hmm. No Fun and uh, Search and Destroy and Raw Power, which has since had a child's toy named after mm -hmm. it. And, and, uh, but you were doing things to was, yourself physically that were... Yeah, and to other what? people, too. Why? <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I was... Uh, bored. <laughs> bored and angry, and uh, when I couldn't, you know, when, when things would get so... When something that d demanded action every day mm -hmm. would keep pestering my mind and I couldn't do anything about it, finally sometimes I would give up and just resort to simple violence. On yourself, though, mostly. Usually on myself, because I hated to do it, take it out on other people. I thought that was wrong. That's considerate. Yeah. I thought I was, no, honestly, I thought I was being more considerate. Yeah. So often I would, I would do to myself what I wanted to do to someone else. I mean, like, for instance, you, you poured hot wax on yourself once. Yes, but that, you see, that didn't hurt. It didn't hurt I, No, it doesn't. It just... And I didn't know at the yourself? time that it wouldn't hurt, though. But you cut yourself with a bottle. Yeah, well, that was because I'd... I'd done something really foolish the night before, and I was ashamed. <laughs> I, had left, I, had left a, I had left this 13-year-old girl at an, at a, stranded at an airport, 
uh, on the East Coast, and she was from the West Coast. And I thought that wasn't right to do to her. No, that's not right. So right, so I got up on stage, and I, I thought, well, what is a fool, what is a, a horrible person like you doing up on this stage? This is all wrong. And I felt so bad that I thought, ah, the heck with it, and I grabbed a glass. And, oh, Jim, but oh But that boy. was, well, I've, I've since, I've had treatment for that sort of thing, you know, since. <laughs> Yeah, it helped a lot, you know. Jimmy, that's a it's rough It's better kind of to be able business. to laugh about it now. Yeah, that's really a hard See, way to See, I knew, yeah. I'll tell yeah, you. Rosie was saying, we were saying, you know, you yeah. burn yourself with the hot rollers when you're on the road. <laughs> yeah. Burn your hair, but... It's about uh, the extent of it. But, but to do what you did, to It's always, yourself. no, listen, it's, it sounds funny, but, um, yeah, it is funny. It's really funny. <laughs> But yeah, I no, know. I was going to say something very you. heavy and, and no, meaningful, but, you, but I no, can't. I know you. <laughs> you <don't dare. laughs> when you saw Iggy perform, what was your I reaction? never saw Iggy perform. I, just heard, I just heard the okay. albums. And uh, then, I must admit, somebody played me a, a videotape of uh, a performance that he did with um, uh, the, uh, his original band, The Stooges. Mm. And uh, I didn't like it very much because, I, uh, because then I saw the violence. And it's not what I heard from the lyrics. Because oh. your, your music, when, when you, I mean, you have a lovely, as you say, sound way up I'm here. a cyborg. My, my cyborg? stuff is, is very different. Mine comes from yeah. sort of up to from right. there. Yeah. And Jimmy's comes from about here down to... Ooh! <laughs> <laughs> about there. You know. I don't know. I wonder what he means by that. <laughs> I don't know. I'll ask you later. Rosie. Okay, kid. Okay. I'll tell you. No, but... <laughs> no, what I what I wanted to know, what was the audience's reaction when you did those things well, to, to them or, or to yourself? It would depend. You see, I did a lot of very good shows then, too. It's like anybody that's reaching sort of like that. Sometimes you'll do incredibly good things and not know it. So sometimes the audience would literally just go nuts, and they'd usually get very demonstrative. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would all pass out. They did? <laughs> yeah, they took There's a lot of... not much response when they do that. Yeah. <laughs> and sometimes they would, sometimes they would just, uh, if it was a room this size, uh, they would all press themselves in groups against the wall as far away as they could get from me and just, they'd watch in horror, but they wouldn't be able to leave either. Yeah. They would have, they would be sort of fascinated. You can it. talk about it now, and you've had treatment. I can talk about it if yeah. it's required. It's not my uh, preferred I subject. Oh, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. I just, but do you feel that in your music you had a chance, coupled, coupled mm -hmm. with the violence, to contribute something? I think I've contributed something else. I think, yeah. Yeah. In what you, in the statement in your music, or in what you were saying about yourself and in the violence I, you perpetrated on I don't know about that, I, but it must have been something good that I've done. Oh, I'm sure I of think, that. I, don't I mean... think perhaps just that there are a lot of people who have enjoyed what I've done mm -hmm. for a long time, so that's good enough, mm -hmm. whatever it is. Do you feel you've influenced anybody in the... I think I helped wipe out the 60s. <laughs> 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 that was safe. Yeah, that's good. David, how about you? Oh, uh, what? Well, <laughs> you know what I do? For instance, you, you have been working with Iggy now, yeah. and you're a very modest man. You're <laughs> sitting there at the keyboard, and one of the conditions on which you came today was that you would not sing a solo, and that you would not talk about David Bowie, and we're friends, and I understand and I respect that. But what happens with David Bowie uh, if, if you're going to continue to uh, sublimate your particular talent? Can you, can your ego stand that? Okay, fine, right. Well, can I, two, yeah, two ways of approaching that. Firstly, is that uh, one thing which uh, uh, I want to get, I want to get straight, right. is that, that um, the collaboration that Jimmy and I have had has been something because I was intoxicated with, uh, with, with what I thought Jimmy stood for, and um, I would never, ever want it to be considered mm -hmm. that I was some kind of, hand manipulator or Svengali behind okay. what Jim is doing now because he's getting popular now mm -hmm. it's only because he's six years too early mm -hmm. what he was doing six years ago was just the same you talk music nothing musically yeah. and musically. his presence okay. what he was doing on stage was was exactly the same it's just that ha I happen to be concerned with it now mm -hmm. because I um, I stayed with it okay. so firstly for me it's a great ambition because I th th there was something with Jimmy that I hadn't seen in rock and roll which was a kind of a method 
I, I can't explain it. A method poetry, as a, it was a, an unleashing of, of um, parts of the the animalistic yeah. kinds of rock that you never really see. It's always usually safeguarded and very, very safe. And sometimes and Jimmy programmed excited and yes, what he was doing. True. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And it ha probably has nothing to do with rock and roll. I think it has more to do with with uh, with um, with method. Method and a human statement. Yeah, I think uh, no, not a human statement. No, just no. method. Jimmy has a a method. Uh -huh. Um, so that's my concern, and I have nothing else better to do, and uh, I've never enjoyed a tour as much as I'm enjoying this yeah. one, just playing keyboards, because I think it's uh, the, uh, as fulfilling as any, mm -hmm. uh, any of my tours. The interesting thing, because it, now, this never... I've developed an American accent. I must lose that. Yeah. 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 It sounds terribly American, dear, to me. <laughs> but no, what, the interesting thing, because I noticed that a lot of the rock artists and the country artists will uh, play as sidemen on a temporary day, a basis, on a recording session mm. with other performers. But I have never seen them do it to this extent, but you are now helping to produce uh, Jimmy's albums. Yeah. Uh, but what happens with your career? Oh, that's fine. I'm, 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 it'll, it'll move along, exactly the way. I am very rich, you know. <laughs> yeah. I can afford it. Yeah. And well, I guess I guess if you're willing to, you know, just wait out, and I I I don't n see the necessity of doing a tour of my own until I want to do one. Yes. Not for the bucks. I'd much prefer to do one because I want to do a tour. Then I prefer to do something that that really excites me. And playing piano behind Iggy Pop for me is very exciting. Well, see, now it, that's it, wonderful. Just, just, you know. and, and that's the kind of thing uh, that usually managers and agents and people like that, uh, they say grab it while you can because the public's taste is whimsical and it changes. Mm -hmm. But uh, for you to say that you can... No, that. public taste doesn't change. There, there is only, there is a just, it's, uh, there's a particular, a hardcore point in the public that, that there's a, a valve, a, a, an emotional point that, that can be touched in two places. It's either on a spiritual level or a gut level. Mm -hmm and that that will never change ever. No, I, I agree with you, but the audience to whom you appeal occasionally w will be fickle or they will move to another group. Oh, But if you well, touch them em emotionally in one way or the other, spiritually... I think Jimmy and I believe in our audiences a lot. Yes, I don't, I don't yes, think we're concerned. Very much. Too much. Well, that's great. Very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Be right back. Mm -hmm. 